My name's Chris Murdoch. Uh, I'm, I'm with Ethere. Had the pleasure, obviously, as you just found out, of working with, with Doug and the Porsche team for the better part of the last two years here since, since Atlanta uh, a couple of years ago. Our, our talk, or what I'll be chatting about with you guys for the next 20 or so minutes here, a little bit different, goes back to the first part of, of that journey and really defining around the use case and a particular part, uh, nuance within the use case around where AR fits versus where there might be better technologies, not smart glasses based, not AR based, that could, could make sense. So title's called AR in the Enterprise World Case Studies and Best Practices in Field Service Education and Training. And I did not come up with that. All right. As you just heard, I mean, we, we went through it just a little bit ago. All Porsche technicians, number one, they go to the, the trade school of their choice. They finish that trade school come into the job market and now have to go through new training specifically around Porsche cars. And there's certain levels and certifications of that training from gold to platinum, depending on the tenure with the organization. But the point that I'm getting at is that these individuals, these technicians across the world and with, with other auto manufacturers too, are some of the best and brightest, most trained individuals that you could have in this particular craft. They have much more training and schooling than, than I personally had. And yet, by introducing the technology, they were able to achieve an average of a 40% reduction in the average time that it took to service and to service the cars when this technology was introduced. So it goes back to the last point. Were, were they poorly trained, potentially? No, not at all. It just comes really down to this kind of subtlety that at least we believe at Ethereum that there really is a difference between training and guidance. And that uh, has been studied even before my time, before I was walking this earth. But training is, is something that will help with, with oil changes, repetitive tasks, things like that, where I do this, I see this very frequently. But guidance is a tool that can be used for unrepetitive tasks, something that you don't see too often, that can help you really solve an issue and diagnose an issue. And there's nothing like a one-on-one -on -one coach and you actually, in front of the physical piece of equipment, doing it that's gonna help you remember that piece of information, remember what you're, what you're doing and learning here. And as I said, I, I, gave a little, I gave it away a little bit here. Goes back to a little bit before me. But these two individuals, uh, Gary Rumler, and I believe it was Thomas Gilbert, and they ran an organization, a uh, consulting organization, I assume it's much like a, a Deloitte, a KPMGs of the world today, where they would go to businesses, organizations, and work on process improvement, specifically around training, and specifically around ways that just the day-to-day -day operations of the organization can improve. And what they really found here is the difference between guidance and training and just how much more effective guidance was for a host of, a host of use cases and a host of things versus training. Specifically ones that, tasks that involve simple steps where accessing these instructions while you're doing the task is not a burden to the actual task. It's not something that's really detrimental. Where small errors in performance can produce significant, significant consequences and where these tasks are really performed only infrequently. It's not a day-to-day -day operation. It's something you maybe have to go into the memory bank for every six, eight months, three months, whatever, whatever the case may be here. Um, where generally accuracy is more important than speed. I personally, as an organization, I don't care if it takes you 15 more minutes, but if you mess up on the accuracy, now we've lost a day, now we've lost a couple of days while this actually has to get sorted out and resolved. And then training, while it is still a great tool, there's learning management systems that really go into it. Uh, they specifically call out times that you should be using training. And that is when speed is more important than accuracy, I have a job here, I need to finish it in, in two minutes for my part of the assembly line, whatever the case may be, where reading instructions would actually interfere with that performance because I'm shifting attention from one to the other of what's physically in front of me versus the instruction manual, even in a heads-up display, um, where small errors are not normally as costly as, as some of the uh, other possibilities here. And they actually go on to kind of talk about um, a particular tool here, or they, the example they give for guidance is around putting a cassette player on an individual on a belt strap and then headphones and then that giving you some sort of instruction as you go around. And we at Ethere at least really believe that AR is really one of the best guidance tools that you can have. It's a little more advanced than a cassette player, not much. Um, 
And so what that really enables and what that really allows for is, you've heard it all the time, but hands-free field division computing. So hands-free field division, what that really enables. Hands-free, if you think about that cassette player, I just press play, it's going, I maybe have to flip the side over once the side runs out, but that's about it. My hands are still allowing me to do what's in front of me, whatever the case may be, and feel the vision. It's right there when I want to access it. Same with the cassette player. I have it on my ears, my eyes aren't blocked, whatever, whatever the case may be. What it really enables and what this really kind of goes beyond the, the cassette player example is, and where AR can really be a great tool for guidance, is you're really getting into a lot of the things that the technology enables, so contextual. And what do we mean by contextual, or what do we believe that we mean by contextual? There's different types of information and there's different types of instruction that you guys have within an organization that may make sense to different individuals within, within the team. Um, so really around knowing who I am, what I'm in front of, and where I am within a particular location. If I'm someone with a couple of years of experience, the information that you want to present to me as a system and as a guidance-based system could be very different than someone that's been around the organization for 15, 20 years, has a lot of, excuse me, a lot of familiarity with the systems that they're working on. Where I am, language is obviously a, hu is a, is a huge thing there, but different safety or different uh, laws and regulations around things you need to do versus being in the US, per, uh, various areas in the EU, Asia, et cetera. Um, and then what I'm in front of. Uh, Chimera is very different than a 911. There's different engines, there's different procedures that you, would, that you would see. And so being able to know that, it allows me to bring up the information that's most relevant to the user a lot faster than what's possible just by flipping a cassette tape over, over and back. Um, it kind of goes back to taking all this information and expertise we have in an organization and then discerning it into what is most relevant for the user when they need, when they need to see it. Uh, the example I think of this uh, is a great quote here, inside every bloated course there's a thin job aid trying to get out. Makes me think of, I have a Bluetooth headset, there's literally two buttons and one charging cable in it. The instruction manual is no joke, 37 pages. And so. Inside there, there's a great way to turn it on and off and turn the volume up and down, and then there's probably about 36 other pages. Um, so what, what enables that? How do you go from 37 to two pages? First is really talking about what predictive things can we give to the user or the individual wearing the glasses, going through this uh, set here, getting guided along their work. I think there's a couple things that you could take from past iterations. Since this is all digital now, instead of being paper-based, you know all the users that have done this. You know when the users have reached out for, you know when the users have reached out for help. 80% of the users called Steve when they were stuck at this same step. Maybe Steve's someone we should suggest for, for Tom to call here because he's running into particular issues. We know all the users on, on another step or on another procedure, they all go and look at this same wiring diagram that makes particular sense. We see a user struggling here, maybe we should show that wiring diagram. We could kind of bubble up the information and guide them along their path and give them that kind of reference material that they, that they need here. Uh, and then collaborative, kind of goes back, to, goes back to the Steve section there. But when I do need help, give me, give me that type of guidance where I'm connecting with someone, we're going over, we're diagnosing, we're seeing what the issue is and now I'm getting help from someone within the organization, possibly a third party, whoever it may be, a partner of your guys's, to really look at and solve an issue that I may see, that I may see once, every, once every year, once every couple of years. Like for going back to the automotive industry, cars that are sold and that you see as a, just a general market in the San Francisco Bay Area are very different than the cars that you see, even from the same dealership or same manufacturer perspective than you'd see in Montana, Idaho, Colorado, where, where some of my family's from. They're just not little less electric vehicles to, to stereotype there. So you see these mechanics that see issues less and less frequently, and so allowing them to collaborate with dealers and, and individuals that do see those type of machines quite often is something that could be hugely helpful uh, and informative. Um, and really in the end, what, that all, what those last kind of five slides boil down to is performance support, uh, enabling these technicians who going back have gone through 
certifications have gone through more trainings than I could even imagine or some of the best and, and brightest individuals in their field, giving them the support that they need to be successful. They have all the tools in the toolkit to do the operation and to do what they need to do, really around taking all this organizational knowledge that we have at a, at a corporate level, um, at an engineering level, whatever the case may be, and giving it a nice way to discern that to them and allow them and guide them through whatever it is they may be doing, whether that be preventative maintenance, whether that be troubleshooting, kind of looking in the heat of the moment of something that may be down and, and causing a big issue there, um, and just enabling them to succeed. They definitely have the, tool, they definitely have the tools to do it. Um, and it goes back to kind of answering the question, what types of tasks are your team working on? And are they particularly guidance-based tasks or are they training tasks? Are they ones where small in nature or uh, infrequent in nature, something where guidance is really the tool or something where training is the tool and it's a pretty, re it's a repetitive tr task. It's something they see day in and day out where maybe that's more of a solution before you think, yeah. That's it, yeah.